Hi, um, no specific request this time, but I had a lot of fun doing the macaroni and cheese video, so I thought, what the heck, uh, I'm going to do another video. This one's going to be how to make one of my favorite dishes of all time, something my mom used to make, a dish from the old country called chicken paprikash. Uh, it's basically shredded chicken in a paprika sour cream sauce with uh, homemade dumplings. Alright, so you want to get your pan going relatively hot. You don't want it necessarily scorching, but you want it pretty hot. And go ahead and melt a quarter cup of butter. Um, if you want, you could substitute bacon for the butter and cook the paprika and the bacon fat, but I, I personally tend to find that that's a little on the greasy side, but because I do like the flavor without necessarily the grease, I'm going to use the leftover uh, pancetta that I used for the macaroni and cheese uh, video, and I'm going to go ahead and toss that in there with the butter. It's a little less fatty, but you get a lot of that good sort of like, I don't it just sort of like bacony flavor. Alright, once you got the pancetta going and it's looking like it's starting to brown up a little bit, uh, you want to add one chopped whole onion and garlic, however much garlic you like. I like a lot of garlic, so I'm doing five cloves. But uh, I do this in the food processor just because cutting onions makes my eyes water like crazy and I'd rather not get myself on video weeping like a child. But uh, usually uh, I would cut this just by hand and just cope with the fact that my eyes were burning. But uh, this time I'm going to do it with the food processor and as you can see it's cut up into a really kind of like fine little little pieces but if you do it by hand it doesn't need to be in this fine a uh, chop. I'm going to basically cook this until the onions start to wilt. Uh, it should be one one to two minutes. Uh, just use your best judgment. I'll show you what it looks like when mine is ultimately done. Alright, so uh, you can probably tell, I don't know if you could see well enough there, that uh, the onions have started to take on a slightly brownish tone. Uh, the way that I usually judge whether or not the onions are ready is that the, the fumes coming up off of the, the pan stop burning my eyes so much. But uh, to this we're going to add one teaspoon of uh, paprika. Uh, if you can find smoked paprika at your grocery store or whatever, I highly recommend using that. It, uh, smoked paprika is something you could add to almost any dish and make it taste amazing, but uh, it's simultaneously it can be a little hard to find. So regular paprika works just fine for this dish. But uh, one teaspoon of paprika. Let me put my topper back on there. And we're also going to want to do a couple pinches of salt, just because you want kind of want to put salt in everything. But uh, you mix all that paprika and that salt in there and it starts getting that really, really nice sort of like reddish color. And then let that go so that the onion flavor and the paprika flavor can uh, sort of marry a little bit. Uh, just kind of let it go for about one to two minutes. Alright, so this has been going for a couple of minutes. Now we're going to add the chicken part of the chicken paprikash. Uh, obviously can't have a, uh, a dish with chicken in the name without chicken. And uh, I like to use the thigh part of the chicken, just because I think that you get a lot better flavor out of the thigh in this particular application. But if you can't find the thigh, or if you're just not a big fan of it, then use whichever part of the chicken you want. It really doesn't matter. And uh, I like to just fit as much chicken into the pan as will fit. There's no real sort of like specific amount of chicken. This is, uh, chicken paprikash is kind of like a peasant dish, uh, so it, it was designed more or less with like, you use what you have. In case you couldn't notice, I'm putting the chicken skin side down. Uh, we're ultimately going to wind up taking the chicken out of the pan and peeling the skin off in order to shred the chicken. And since we're going to be peeling the, sh chicken, uh, the skin off and essentially throwing it away, I want to get as much of that good chicken fat out of, out of the chicken as possible because that's where all the flavor is going to come from. Right, and then to this, we're going to be adding one and a half cups of chicken stock. Uh, you could use water, like say if you decided to do this and then you forgot to buy the chicken stock, you could just use water. But uh, the chicken stock is really going to kind of like crank the chicken flavor up to 11, so to speak. But uh, if you can make your own chicken stock, then more power to you. That's going to taste amazing. I went ahead and brought this back up to a low boil. You can probably see the little bubbles sort of like starting to pop up here and there. I'm going to go ahead and hit this with a little bit of uh, cracked black pepper uh, just for taste. I'm going to go ahead and turn this down to about as low a simmer as I can get it and cover it up 
you want this to be as low as you can with it still boiling because it's going to be it's going to be uh, boiling like this for about or simmering like this for about 45 minutes, and uh, you don't want the bottom to burn. Okay. As the in the meantime, as that's uh, simmering away over there, we're going to go ahead and make the dough for the dumplings. Uh, it's a real it's about the easiest pasta recipe you could possibly imagine, short of just adding water to flour. So it's don't be intimidated at the idea of making your own dumplings. This is actually a really good sort of like primer to making your own pasta because it's so simple. All right, you basically uh, you want to add to a, a little mixing bowl just about as uh, about this big. It depends on how many dumplings you want to make. Add roughly a cup of flour. Um, this again, it's not an exact size. Actually, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more than that. I'm gonna go ahead and do a cup and a half. Uh, it depends on how many dumplings you want to make. Uh, I like a lot of dumplings in my paprikash, so I tend to make a little more, uh, hence the, the extra half cup of flour that I'm throwing in there. But uh, you want to make a little bit of a well there in your flour, and then into that little well, you're going to crack two eggs. And then it's easiest to just kind of like use your hands because it's using a fork it tends to turn into like a giant drumstick worth of dough and it's a really more hassle than it's worth. But this still really powdery mixture I'm going to add one half cup of beef stock and uh, at this point you could really kind of add whatever sort of like fluid you want in order to flavor the dumplings how you like. Uh, if you don't have stock or if you're just uh, not feeling terribly creative that day you can add just, it could just be all water, but uh, I'm going to add beef stock because I think it will give it a nice uh, savory counterpoint to the uh, to the really sort of like spicy pa paprika sauce. I would have used all beef stock, but I'm not, you know, I'm, as I'm fond of saying, I don't, I'm not cooking for the Pope, so I, I really don't care that much about how much uh, fluid I get in there. Uh, the rest of this is all going to be water, but it's actually looking like I'm at about the consistency that I want. I'm going to go ahead and add just a touch more water. And uh, while you're doing this, again, you see I'm not really uh, measuring out the fluid. If it gets too gluey, like if it gets to the point where like you don't think it will hold up in the boiling water, just toss in a little bit more flour, you know? But uh, this is more or less the consistency that you want. You can see that it's sticky, but it's not like solid. It's kind of like a, uh, a really sort of like thick paste. You know what I mean? All right, now I'm just going to mix in a little pinch of salt into this dough uh, in order to give it a little bit of a flavor boost. Uh, there's a fair amount of uh, salty flavor in that uh, beef broth, so I'm not going to add too much salt. I probably would add more if I just used water. I'm going to get my rested dough ready to, uh, to drop into the boiling water. Basically what you want to do is you want to scoop as much of the dough to the edge of your bowl as you can get because what you're going to be doing is scooping little globs of dough into the boiling water and letting it boil just kind of like freeform. Uh, one little trick that I do know works, uh, just in the name of not burning yourself, you want to rest the edge of the bowl on the edge of your uh, boiling pot and you want to take your spoon and dip it in the boiling water to begin with. That heat that will hang into the spoon will help you cut the dough easier. That way you can get nice clean cuts and stuff will cling a lot less. So then you basically just bite off little bits and let it drop straight into the water. And uh, if you find that it's starting to stick a little bit, th uh, dunk it back into water and uh, keep going. All right, and as you're doing this, uh, every now and again you might want to reach down with your spoon and give it a stir to make sure that the dumplings aren't sticking to the bottom. As you see, my water is not at a rolling boil right now. It's just kind of like steaming hot. Uh, it, Chances are that it will get up to a boil eventually, but the, dropping the dough into the water will reduce the temperature. Once the dumplings start floating, they're done. You can pull them off the heat. Yeah, it looks like we're about done. Let's stick this in the sink, and then I'm going to get a bigger spoon. That one actually is kind of starting to heat up on me a little bit. And uh, give this a stir. Make sure that it's uh, not sticking. It doesn't feel like any of them are sticking. And as you can tell, they're starting to puff up a little bit and they hold their shape relatively well. I mean, part of the fun of this dish, I thought when I was a little kid, was uh, all the different little shapes that you get out of a lot of the dumplings. All right, my dumplings are starting to float, 
that's usually a good sign that they're about done. Nothing's sticking down there. So, yeah, these are done. And just like we did with the macaroni and cheese, these might still be a little raw on the inside, but we're going to cook them for a while in the broth, and so we don't want them to be completely done. Uh, we don't want them to be completely done when we put them in. We want them to cook a little bit in the broth because they'll absorb a lot of that flavor. All right, this is about how much uh, that cup and a half of uh, uh, flour will give you in terms of dumplings. Uh, might be a little more, might be a little less, depending on how efficient you are at pulling the dough out of the bowl. But uh, that's what you want, and you don't, you don't want to rinse it this time because there's going to be starch and stuff that's clinging to the dumplings. And in this case, you do want it because it'll help thicken up the, the broth that's coming out. But uh, the bowl that you use to make your dough, uh, you want to fill that with water as soon as you're done because that, that, uh, that dough will turn into basically to cement. And you don't want that to happen because otherwise you'll be chipping it out with a spoon for an hour and a half and you don't want that to happen. Alright, I actually let this go for a little bit more than 45 minutes. I let it go for about an hour. Uh, once you get past the 45 minute mark, uh, the amount of cooking that you do to it really doesn't matter a whole, whole lot. So, you see the, the chicken is cooked all the way through. We've uh, rendered out a lot of the fat from the, from the chicken skin. And now using a slotted spoon, uh, a spoon with little holes in it, uh, I'm scooping the chicken out into a little bowl so that I can let it cool and I'm going to shred it. And uh, this chicken is, I'm going to cover this up and then I'm going to put it straight in the refrigerator because I want it to cool as fast as possible. I don't want to be sitting around waiting for this thing to cool for the next hour and a half. Uh, but I wouldn't recommend putting it in the freezer just because it'll lower the temperature of your freezer and your free, uh, frozen goods might wind up uh, uh, thawing a little bit. Okay, in the meantime, while the chicken is cooling, I'm going to scoop about half a cup of sour cream into a little bowl. Um, again, I'm not going to be measuring this. Uh, I'm, I just, I've done this recipe a bunch of times, so I know more or less what I'm looking for. And then to that, we're going to add two tablespoons of flour. And this is going to be a thickening agent that's going to uh, make it even creamier in addition to the sour cream. The reason you're mixing the flour into the sour cream is uh, as hot as the sauce is right now, if you dumped it right into the sauce, uh, the, the glutens would explode immediately and you'd have clumps. You really want to mix this in sort of as good as you can in order to eliminate the clumps. And I went ahead and switched uh, from mixing with a spoon to wick, uh, mix, mixing with a wire whisk. Uh, there's still a little bit of clumps in the sour cream, but that's not a huge deal. That should smooth out once it gets into the sauce. And then using the wire whisk, I'm just going to scoop a bunch up and whisk it into the sauce like this. Uh, this will incorporate the flour and the sour cream sort of in a more gradual way. That way it, it even more lessens the chances that you're going to wind up with clumps. Alright, I got all the sour cream and flour mixture in there. As you can see, I still have a little bit of... Uh, sort of like clumps of sour cream and flour kind of floating around in there right now. Uh, but I have it on a relatively low temperature, so I should be able to beat those out without too much ado. But just remember, if you make this and you, and you realize that there's still some clumps floating around in your uh, sauce, it's not really a big deal. It's, it's like as long as you beat the flour into the sour cream ahead of time, there's not going to be like big doughy globs. And you also have to remember we're going to be putting the dumplings, which are essentially big doughy globs, in there on purpose so it's it's chances are unless you're unless you're cooking for like emerald agassi no they're not going to notice all right that's all incorporated and all the lumps are more or less taken out um now i'm going to crank the heat up to about medium and uh put the top back on and uh cook the flour flavor out of, out of this sauce all right this has been going for about five minutes and uh kind of deviating from my normal recipe here i'm going to try something a little different uh, don't feel obligated to do this if you're, uh, if you're making this yourself and if you're following my recipe very closely, then you want to skip this step. But it's, I've, I've always wondered what would happen if I did this. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a little bit of cayenne pepper on top of this sauce, just maybe like half a teaspoon, and uh, see if a little bit of spice doesn't go a long way on this, uh, on this recipe here. Like and just with the smoked paprika, I really think the flavors would go well together. That's been going for about 15 minutes. It's got the cayenne in there. Uh, it's more or less where I want it to be. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat off entirely. And then I'm going to, with, the, with it completely off the heat, scoop the dumplings into the sauce. That'll cool the sauce down rather quickly, but it'll also uh, finish uh, 
uh, cooking the dumplings so that they're not raw on the inside and they'll also absorb a lot of that uh, uh, flavor from the sauce. Uh, if your dumplings, uh, in the process of cooling, if your dumplings sort of like congealed together in a big mass, don't panic. Uh, that it just happens because there's a lot of starch uh, on the outsides of them. But it's as it heats up, they'll loosen up and then they'll come apart. Uh, so like I said, don't panic. Go ahead and let that sit for, I don't know, five to ten minutes, depending on how hungry you are. And uh, here in a little bit, we'll pull the chicken out of the refrigerator, shred it up, and stick it in there. All right, I probably should let these cool a little bit more just to save the skin in my hands a little bit of a trouble, but uh, the smell of this is driving me crazy, so I'm going to go ahead and start peeling it. Uh, usually, I would save the skin and put it in the uh, uh, put it in the paprikash, but I'm trying to lose weight, so I'm going to take the skin off. And uh, you just want to peel as much of the chicken, uh, the the actual chicken meat, off the bones as you can. This is still really hot. Uh, and s s save it in a little bowl here because of, uh, well, we're going to add it back into the paprikash. All right, now once the chicken is all pulled off the bones, you really want to make sure that you don't lose any of this good uh, flavoring that you pulled out with the chicken. So what I like to do is take the larger chunks of chicken that are off the bone now and sort of like re-shred them back into the sauce. Oh. Timer's still on. And um, this is a, it's a not entire, an entirely necessary step. I just I prefer my chicken to be in bite-sized chunks, and uh, it also gives me a second uh, go through to make sure that like there's no little pieces of like cartilage floating around in the, in my pile of chicken because of uh, I remember when I was young uh, when I would be eating something and there was a texture in the food that I was eating that I didn't expect. It would make me gag. This is when I was like a really really little kid, so. If you have little kids, or if you're sensitive to textures, or if you just want to be extra careful, you might want to do this as well. But if you're hardier than I am and you don't really care, then you can completely skip this step. Alright, got my uh, chicken all shredded. I uh, got what I hope is all of the cartilage out. Uh, now I'm going to scoop the chicken back into the sauce. Make sure I get every last little bit, because the when I pulled the chicken out, it took a lot of the pancetta with it, and I want to make sure that I get uh, as much of that pancetta back in there as I can. And uh, at this point, everything is cooked, so you could, in theory, eat it right now as is. But what I recommend doing is uh, mixing the chicken in there so that it's nice and everything's evenly distributed. That way, every scoop that you pull out is going to have a, it's going to have a nice distribution of dumplings and sauce and chicken but uh, in addition to that the chickens cold <laughs> so you want to heat the chicken back up uh, go ahead and throw the top back on and just let it sit for five minutes now if you can if you can wait five minutes that's good on you because this smells amazing and I'm, it's hard to not just dive in right now but I'm gonna wait the five minutes because I want to I want to heat it back up everything seems like it's pretty well heated back up uh, let's go ahead and Pull out a ladle full and see how we did here. All right, let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and get a nice big ladle full. You see how it comes out more like a stew than like a uh, soup, which is great. That's really what we're shooting for here. And uh, I'm actually gonna fancy this up just a little bit. <clears throat> this is purely cosmetic. It really doesn't. There's really not a whole lot in the way of practical reasons why you would want to do this one, but it does make the dish look a little nicer. I got a little spill there, I didn't realize that. Is, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get a little, put a little dollop of sour cream right in the middle. There. And then I'm also going to toss on some crack, fresh crack, crack back, black pepper on top. So here's what your what your bowl ultimately looks like. You can eat this out of a plate, but I recommend a bowl. I also recommend eating this with bread because you're really going to want to get in there and soak all that sauce up and eat it because it's really, really good. Get some chicken and a dumpling all in one nice big bite. Mmm. Yeah, yeah, that turned out perfect. Um, 
the cayenne that I put in, just for anyone who was interested, didn't really do a whole lot, but it does give a little bit of heat, like on the afterburn. You don't get any initial heat, like right as you're taking a bite, but there is a little bit of that mild burn coming after, after you swallow, and that's really nice. Um, in terms of making this recipe your own, um, there's not as much in the way of options, but I mean, that's entirely up to you. This is the way that I like it. I've been eating this since I was probably three years old. So this is the way that I like it. This is the way that I make it. If you want to put chopped vegetables in there, you go right ahead. If you want to put in, like I, like Tressa does, if you want to put shredded potatoes in your dumplings, you go right ahead. If you don't have time and you don't feel like making dumplings, just use like bow tie pasta or like, uh, you know, macaroni. You can put any kind of pasta in there. You can put no pasta and put it over top of a bed of rice. That would go over really well. Um, if you really want to fancy up the presentation a little bit more, chopped green onions against that red background look really, really nice. So, uh, you know, experiment. See what you can come up with. And um, if you come up with anything exceptional, uh, shoot me a comment and uh, let me know. But uh, in the meantime, that's that's how you make chicken paprikash, and uh, yeah, it's sorry if this one ran long, and uh, happy cooking.